me and Lacey Horton. Now, this is this is just in a dream. Okay. You, have you ever rode a giant elevator that's open? No, I really haven't, no. All right. It's it's like when you go to the hospital. You know, the, everything's enclosed, but you yeah. can feel the elevator going up. Oh, sure. But this thing, it's open on the ends, you know, for supplies or well, sure. whatever. Sure. So we're all riding this elevator outside, and I'm hanging on. on they've got chains for you to grip and mm -hmm. go out. Right. But so on the way up, Lacey Horton is standing beside me. I'm looking at my fellow members, and everybody there has got a solemn face, no smiling, no kidding, no laughing. So at the very top of the shaft, an elevator, just like uh, at a hospital, will have an automatic slowdown. All right. So this thing started slowing down about 10 feet from the very top. Well, we, we let loose of our chains and walked over to the where we could get off. And the only thing you got to do is just you know, step off to the landing. Okay. And about the time we got ready to step, this thing went <clears throat> straight back down in that hole as fast as, uh, you know, anything you've ever seen in your life. Mm -hmm. We're holding on to the chains now. Okay. My other mine rescue members, their feet are flying in the air. You know, you can still see the shock look in their face, but here's their feet flying up where we're going so fast. Okay. The next part of the dream, I see metal just crumbling. It's 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 uh, ripping apart. It's just crumbling, and uh, then I wake up. Now that was my Ooh. my nightmare. Wow. Two, and I told one thing you always do if you have a nightmare like this: make sure you tell somebody just as quick as it happens. Okay. Because who in the world is going to believe you two weeks later when you say, "Well, I dreamed about that two weeks ago." Well, the next morning, I told my, my boss and uh, a co-worker mm -hmm. I was with at this right. other mine's about my nightmare. All right. I mean, I was I was really nightmare. shook up about this. Okay. And what happened was, two weeks later, they called me at 7 o'clock in the morning. My dust analyst called me because, you know, it was my mind it was happening to. He said, Alan, the president of the company wants you to get up here Get on the telephone, get your mine rescue team up here. I said, Sparky, what's wrong? He said, the mine's on par. So they've already pulled all the men out, but the mine's on par. Mm. Well, at that very moment, I looked at the guys I was talking with, talking to, and I told them, hey, listen, my nightmare's coming true. So I went to the mines. We went inside the mines, and I was shaking like a leaf. I mean, having a nightmare like that and find out it's, it's really happening, my mine and rescue team went in, the safety director went in, mm -hmm. and here comes Lacey Horton, the state mine inspector. <laughs> wow. So I'm walking side by side in my nightmare. Mm -hmm. We get up in this far area. The far encircles us, the same thing as the nightmare. Mm -hmm. On the way out, I informed Lacey Horton about what I had dreamed. So when me and Lacey got on that cage at night, that day, we were holding on for dear life, and when we got to the very top on that landing, we both jumped off the cage. Here's the next part of the story. One day later, that mines blowed the kingdom come. That cage we were riding on was nothing but a crumbled mess. There was no mm. cage. It, it just split the pieces and went straight mm. back in the hole. So everything I dreamed about came true. So that opened oh my. my eyes, mm -hmm. you know, on dreams and uh, mm. uh, fate and the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So after that, you know, I was really aware of what's around me like mm. this. Um, but, uh, Al Alan, uh, that 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 you said that was sort of your first uh, first uh, event yep. there. Uh, yes, sir. Since since then, if you had uh, extraordinary dreams uh, that didn't come true, say, would you say that those were misfires i mean how do you differentiate between what will happen and what might happen and what won't happen is it just random oh god i wish i wish i could answer that <laughs> that was a good one but I, I can't i can't the only thing i know is when i when i would have something like that happen to me i would usually raise up the cold sweat everything and i've mm. only had it one time mm. and that was it Mm -hmm. The next time is when I died about five years ago, or so the doctor says. Since then, I've had another heart attack. Oh, boy. But on that dream, ever since I died, I, I've, I've never feared death after it. Mm. It was the most peaceful. Uh, if you've ever been contented, 
Mm-hmm. That's the way I felt. Mm-hmm. I got out of a car. The car was crushed and everything. We went over an mm-hmm. embankment of 100-something feet. Yeah. And I wasn't walking. I was looking at my body in the car. And I rose upward. And there was two old women and uh, two men standing where I had went over the embankment. Mm-hmm. You know, they say when you when you fall a certain in your dreams, if you fall, that you will always wake up before you hit bottom. Mm-hmm. I know you've heard this. Oh, certainly. And oh, yeah. So that's what was in my mind when the car went over. I kept thinking, well, I'm going to wake up any second because you always wake up before you die. Mm-hmm. Well, I didn't wake up. And when I went up to these women that was on the road, I could hear them crying. I can, you know, um, they were really upset. Mm-hmm. I kept hollering at them, hey, I'm all right. I'm standing right here beside mm-hmm. of you. But I kept rising. Mm-hmm. Now, I have no idea where I went, but it was the most peaceful ride I've ever uh, had in my life. Did you ever see the movie of Forrest Gump? Sure. All right. At the end of it, did you see the feather flying in the air? Right after the box of chocolates, I did. (laughs) Right. (laughs) That's how I felt. I was so light, it was ridiculous. Well, I went up to this Mm -hmm. one area. And, you know, they say St. Peter comes and meets you and all that. Mm-hmm. I don't know who he was, but he oh, had bib overalls on, no shoes. <laughs> and he grabbed my hand, pulled me up, oh, and boy. I had hundreds of people coming to me. Oh, he didn't sound like Johnny Cash, and, did he? Huh? Was it, was it a country boy, you thinking? Uh, he was definitely a country boy. All right. <laughs> but I had everybody. I had okay. people that I'd never seen before mm-hmm. in my life. Mm-hmm. But the, the feeling I got was so overwhelming, it was ridiculous. Mm. When I finally came to, woke up, I was sleeping on the couch, mm-hmm. the only thing I wanted to do was go back to sleep or wherever I was at. Yeah. It was that, that much contentment. Yeah, you want to get back there. You know, but you I mean, can't. It was a, but it was you a can't. feeling like you never had. But you can't get back there. Once you're out, no, you, you, not, you can't. No, not unless you're gone. <laughs> you, know, you know, Alan, uh, you, uh, you were talking about falling and waking up. There is... A, and I'm, I guess over time I've watched a number of movies, so I guess I refer to them as such. But uh, a movie called Secret Window with Johnny Depp, uh, he is laying on a couch, and in there mm-hmm. he falls off. And he, in his dream, he's falling off a cliff into uh, waves of water, crashing waves uh, 100 feet down. And just before he hits the, hits the floor, he wakes up. So, yeah, that was exactly what you're saying about that falling sensation. Oh, it was, it was the... Uh weirdest cessation I ever had in my life. Mm-hmm. But ever since then, any time I take a picture, mm-hmm. I can sense it, I can feel it, mm-hmm. and I have, uh, it doesn't matter where I'm at. Mm-hmm. If if I think I haven't got anything, mm-hmm. I usually do have something. Yeah. And the biggest part of time, when you go into a haunted location, mm-hmm. oh. you, you really, truly, you think you haven't got anything. You mm-hmm. just uh, leave the place with nothing until you go over your evidence. After you go over your evidence, all of a sudden mm-hmm. your eyes are wide open. Oh. Uh, one of the things, uh, how much, now I've got to ask you, because I, I don't know you you know personally, you don't know me personally. Sure. How much do you believe in psychics? Well, I don't like them. Okay, good. I don't, well, I, don't, I, don't, I shouldn't say good. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've got some friends, you know. I don't, have much, I don't have much use for them. I know they're out there, but, uh, you know. Now, I know there's real people out there. Okay. Oh, and I've, I've, you know, I've talked to a lot of them, but in 1983, you know, I had no idea about psychics. As far as I was concerned, it was demons waiting to get mm. me. Oh, yeah. But uh, I did this as uh, something to do on a weekend. Sure. Me and my wife had heard about this little old psychic, and mm. she had predicted the death of four or five kids at a high school. Ooh. And, you know, we just thought to ourselves, we, we found out where she lived. Mm-hmm. We said, well, we'll go get our fortune read.